That, take me to that time you first got hit straight in the face. Like, can you remember the first time somebody really, I know you've been hit a yeah, lot because of what right? you do, but like, that's something people fear their whole lives. That's what a lot of this like fake macho bullshit that these guys do that have never been in a fight in their life yeah. and they start shit and they're angry and they yell at people. I ultimately feel it's because they've never gotten a fight before. They don't know how to throw a punch. They're, they're, it's their insecurities yeah. kind of creeping out. Right. And people walk around being afraid of being hit in the face. I've been hit in the face a lot. Yeah. Okay, I've had people walk up to me and be like, yeah. you Carlos tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah, boom, they oh, hit me yeah. in the face, okay? <laughs> this episode of To The Top is brought to you by The Realty Medics. Check out therealtymedics.com. And Andretti Indoor Karting and Games of Orlando. Welcome to another edition of To The Top. I'm your host, Carlos Alberto Navarro. To The Top is a show that makes you think, makes you laugh, whatever it may be. And today's show might kick your ass. That's how it goes. Uh, I am uh, very happy to have Miss, Mrs. Felicia Spencer yeah. on the show. Welcome to, uh, to To The Top. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to be here. Well, it yeah. is uh, a, a real treat for me for a couple reasons. Uh, first off, um, I, we just got to know each other through the wonderful uh, things that it is social media. Yeah. Um, you started following me. I was like, well, wait a second. For those who don't know, Felicia Spencer <laughs> is a legitimate badass. And um, what ranking are you right now in your division? You know, I actually am not sure. Yeah, um, I tried to look that my, up, but it's not like uh, definitive. It, yeah, the UFC doesn't have a divi uh, ranking right now for my division. It's still kind of a developing division. Uh -huh. Very small. I don't think there's even 10 featherweights on the roster right, right now. Right. So um, if you just like go random websites, I'm usually like top three, top I would four. Say so. yeah, yeah, I so. would say so. Yeah, I mean, um, for those who don't know, um, you are, and it's a rather new division, right, for the UFC? For the UFC, yeah. 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 And so um, the UFC is the mecca of of fighting at this point. I mean, uh, mm. for for men, for, for, for women, and to get to the UFC is not easy. It's not easy. I don't know exactly how many people are in the UFC, but what, under three hundred. Under yeah. three hundred, something and, like that. And there's got to be hundreds of thousands of fighters in <laughs> yeah. the world. Yeah. Um, and so when you we, when we did connect, I was very excited to have you on because I have so many questions. I am a right. die-hard UFC <laughs> fan and and a big fan of both sides. I think what the UFC has been able to do with the women's side. Um, it's probably the only sport where you're parallel as far as like uh, excitement being on the co co main main right, card right. like you were against yeah, Cyborg. Yeah. Um, I went back and I watched your fight because <laughs> I watched it initially, and yeah. that's when you first really caught my attention. Uh, for the audience, a lot of the audience they're not into fighting. Mm -hmm. Some of them are. Yeah. Um, let's go all the way back because I could okay. go right to your yeah, your yeah. fight, but let's go all the way back. How does a a a, a beautiful young lady like you go? And so, you know what? I want to beat the shit out of people for a living. How, how does it start for you? Uh, for me, it was just like a life of always doing martial arts. Like, since I was four years old, my parents put me in Taekwondo. I'm a Taekwondo black right. belt, first yeah. degree. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it just kind of started with that passion for the sport. And mm -hmm. then, you know, started doing jujitsu and kickboxing and mostly just for fun at first. And mm -hmm. I had zero interest in actually, you know, fighting for, for, for real. And, yeah. You know, especially at that time, I was like, that's not even really an option yeah, at the it wasn't, time. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, were your parents into it as well? Uh, they were sort of inspired by like the Gracies' accomplishments in the beginning UFC okay, events. Okay. And that's kind of what wanted us to do martial arts. You know, just for that's the kind when of, I first started watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they weren't like fans of the UFC though. We didn't grow up watching it or really being involved with it. Mm -hmm. um, the it just so happened to be like the people I was around at the martial arts school. We had cross training, you know, different people doing different things. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually I started doing grappling tournaments. I started to, uh, well, actually when I moved to Orlando from Southeast or Southwest Florida, I moved to Orlando for UCF. Yes. I wanted to go to school here. Go Knights. And it just so happened to be that someone that was at my gym before that had MMA coach at our gym was here opening a gym called The Jungle. And that's Seth Petrozelli? Seth Petrozelli awesome. was a co-owner. Tom Waller was also a, an owner at the time. Um, and at that time, you know, it just so happened to be, oh, I'm going to go train What year was this? What year was this? 2009. Okay. When I moved to Orlando and um, I went to the gym, he was very welcome. It was kind of like a home away from home right. because I didn't really know anyone else in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's what I've seen gyms in general are. Yeah. It's like 
a family atmosphere, a place that you can trust. I mean, you're rolling around with people. <laughs> you're sweating on people. Yeah. It's it's a very intimate atmosphere. I was joking around, but I was a black belt first degree taekwondo yeah. when I was younger. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to play baseball. And then I'm yeah. going to play basketball. <laughs> and I so regret like doing those things because I feel like – I wish I would still have been doing that because I yeah. see how close everybody is in that community. Yeah, and you know it's not like that every gym. But sure, you find sure, the right sure. one, and the the jungle. I mean, you know the personalities. Yeah, there, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it was it was really nice to have you know a bunch of brothers around me all the time, right. especially being you know so young in a big city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and in 2009, that was still pre. I mean, we had what Gina Carano, who yeah. is the original kind yep. of badass of the UFC, and then. Really, Ronda Rousey and Cyborg were the yeah. ones who brought it to the to the highest level where it's at now. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they came later. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, UFC didn't even have women. Right. And, um, Gina was kind of the face of the mm -hmm. the women's MMA at the time. Yeah, because Dana White was like, look, oh, at the time, never. like, well, we're never yeah. going to have uh, women. <laughs> yeah. Until there's a lot of money involved, yeah. and my biggest star happens to be a female. You right. know, at a certain exactly. point. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, so you start training at the jungle. Yeah. You start getting a little. And, and when did when does it start creeping in? Like, wait. A second i'm i might i might yeah. try this for a living you know i think it's the i, I started doing like the they call it pro class like the more advanced like sparring like okay. going live more um, a little with, bit hard like actually the, throwing punches yeah, and, and you know i didn't really do like with taekwondo we don't really strike to the face that much except mm -hmm. for kicks which mm -hmm. i love doing yeah yeah <laughs> um but so i was like starting to do that and i'm like you know what this isn't that bad you know i'm i guess tough or whatever sure whatever yeah. comes from it um so yeah i just started to enjoy all of it together uh -huh. all put together mma you know yeah. mixed martial arts and then they're like let's get you a fight and i'm like yeah let's do it so, so take me to that time you first got hit straight in the face like can you remember <laughs> the first time somebody really i know you've been hit a yeah, lot because of right? what you do but like that's something people fear their whole lives that's what a lot of this like fake macho bullshit that these guys do that have never been in a fight in their life yeah. and they start shit and they're angry and they yell at people I ultimately feel it's because they've never gotten in a fight before. They don't know how to throw a punch. They're, they're, it's right. their insecurity yeah. is kind of creeping out. Right. And people walk around being afraid of being hit in the face. I've been hit in the face a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've had people walk up to me and be like, yeah. you Carlos Navarro? And I'm like, yeah. Boom. They oh, hit me yeah. in the face. Okay. But yeah. do you remember that first real one-on-one mm. -on -one when maybe the pro class? Because that's what I want to get in the yeah. mind of. Because y you know your mind is a rare breed to, to yeah. get to do what yeah. you do. Yeah, I know. It, we all feel a little crazy to do <laughs> Yes. It. Um, you know, I, I don't really remember because I've you know, been kicked in the head so much, you know, growing <laughs> up and all that. So it kind of felt similar. Yeah. Um, I guess I could think back to, like, my first actual fight. It, it was kind of don't really pay attention to it like when your adrenaline is that high you and don't you're feel just, it as much. you don't feel it yes. so it's it's not like in the gym at all because in the gym you get you know you're not trying to hurt each other but you you know you're yeah, still going for it they're yeah. gonna they're gonna get slide in mm -hmm. accidentally sometimes mm -hmm. a, little, a little harder than you thought right. so those ones really like you know you, you kind of like absorb it and kind of almost get more shaken up in the gym because you're like are you right you're right yeah we're right, good all right right right, <laughs> right. Then you laugh and you <laughs> <laughs> okay and then we go again so but in a fight it's like boom boom boom, boom. and oh, then you yeah. gotta just keep going so in a fight it's actually easier to take it's, a punch that makes sense for sure okay so um, <laughs> you're 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 moving forward you're 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 like okay then somebody goes, "Hey, let's you got to you got to get your first pro fight. What was your first pro fight like? Do you remember where was it at? What what did you do?" For sure. And and actually my first oh, they were trying to get me a fight and in back in the time I started um, there were no amateur fights in Florida. It was just straight to pro. You're oh, a wow. professional. Okay. So I was on, you know, I was getting ready for my first pro fight in 2009 or 2010. And then that fight fell through. A couple months later, the law changes, and I got to get five amateur fights now before oh, I can go pro. Oh, okay. okay. Um, which ended up, I think, working, it ended out better up for you. working out being good, yeah. you know, even though I probably could have been fine. Sure. Um, so fast forward five years, you know, five amateur fights. I actually got six. Um, it was awesome. I got to travel. For you must have fights. won those fights. I actually lost my first fight. Oh. My first fight was a split decision loss. Um, I really, like, looking back at it, of course, you know, it makes you so much better. Every, the two losses I've had. Yeah. Um, you know, looking back, the next time I step in there, um, You're like, why did I do this? Why did I could yeah, have done this? I'm um, yeah. executing better. You know, you learn from your wins, too, but the losses really make you, like, all right, I didn't execute. Why didn't I do what I trained to do? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, why did I hold back here? What, you know, so it really makes you just like gun for it. Sure, sure. Um, that's why I'm really excited to get back in there. Um, 
So you go through these amateur fights, and then you take your first pro fight. Where was your first pro fight at? It was in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Um, Invicta, actually. I, as an amateur, Invicta, I won huh? a um, tournament, a, an amateur tournament, to win an Invicta contract. Okay. Which, which is huge. Is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, for especially a pro debut mm -hmm. to be in, it's the biggest women's organization in the world. Mm -hmm. They're kind of a feeder to the UFC. Absolutely. They're on UFC Fight Pass. They're a partnership with the UFC. Um, and that's where all the biggest names came up, really, before the UFC had women. Right. Um, so it was a huge deal. Dream come true immediately. Like, all Okay. Right. And let's talk a little money here. This is what I always wanted. You don't have to yeah. go into the details of everything, but you score your first contract. What does that mean? Because what a lot of people don't know is that when you're a fighter, you got to pay for your trainer. Mm -hmm. You got to pay for your gym time. You got to pay for your travel. It's not. It, it's almost like you guys are independent contractors, right? We are. For yes, sure. Which we, is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Like at this point, how, I mean, when, this is not about the politics of UFC, mm -hmm. but I'm too big of a fan also to not be a bit critical. Uh, at this point, being sold to a major corporation, mm -hmm. um, I really hope. Actually, I'm wearing an Andrew Yang shirt, and, <laughs> yeah. and he's yeah. a big yeah. MMA a good, guy. Yeah. And uh, and you guys should be have a union. You guys should right. have some protection because it is dangerous to what mm. you do. So to get back to your Invicta uh, contract, right. what does that entail? You don't have to go to the nitty-gritty yeah, details, yeah. but like, are you able to breathe for the year? Are you able to breathe <laughs> for the month? What is, um, how does that work? Well, I to this day, I st I'm still a full-time teacher. Yeah. I'm oh, still working. Yeah. Interesting. It's Florida Virtual School, so I kind of can work my schedule around training. But I am still a teacher. Benefits. Yes. I don't want to lose yes, them. Yes, I don't blame you. Know, you. I mean, what do you not teach? that I couldn't. I teach algebra. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, ever, you know, I could step away right now and be fine this year. Right. But I just like for me, I just I'm always one that's looking ahead. Good and, for you. Until I'm really secure in my division in the UFC. You're very close. You know. You're, you're, yeah. You're I feel very like close. it's there. Like I could step away from teaching. You know, eventually. It, you it's know. Good for you, no, yeah. Felicia. Forget about that. You know, yeah. like be smart. Exactly. They're, they're, Gotta take care of myself. Take care of yourself. You're a married woman. I'm sure. You want like kids in the future. Yeah. You want all these things. Look, Jay Leno to this day, he never spent any of his Tonight Show money. <laughs> he only he still did stand up. Yeah, you know, and a lot, Shaq never spent his NBA money. Nice. He only spent his advertising money. Oh, that's awesome. You yeah. know, so to be smart about it, as Marshall Ma, uh, Marshawn Lynch says, you know, count your chicken right. You know, right, right. Uh, you have another talent of teaching. Stay with that as long as you can. Right. While it works. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it's yes. something. It makes my life a lot more crazy, but I can handle it. You can so, handle it, and you, know? you can still have time to train, and exactly. you can still have which is. And I've still gone this far doing it. Absolutely, <laughs> so. and, and and I mean to talk about this far once again, I, I'll, I'll I'll be uh, kind of the the teacher if you will to the audience that that may not know how far you've come i mean you were that close to the championship you were literally yeah. you were right next <laughs> you fought arguably the greatest female mma fighter of all time i mean at, and at one time that was for there was, sure there was yeah, no, no doubt argument. that she was yeah, yeah. for sure there was... And, i mean it isn't until recent that amanda nunez right. is kind of okay well we got to kind of give her she's beaten everybody right? Right, right but you went and took her on at when you were i think seven and oh yep and how did that fight go about? Now, for everybody, so they know, Cyborg, she was she was, she was undefeated at a certain point, all the way up until what? Um, uh, Amanda Nunes and uh, there was one fight very very early in her career. Yeah, so she was on like a seventeen or eighteen what fight it, when she it, like it, years, ten mode. years, yeah. ten years. I think scary, um, yeah. a <laughs> scary woman. A, by all accounts, a pretty nice sweetheart of a woman when you're not fighting her. You right, know, yeah. I know y'all had a little beef and everything like that too, but. <laughs> When you get that call this early, which being seven and zero in a career in fighting yeah. is pretty early to get the call to take on what is probably the one of the greatest, if not the greatest. How was that call? How did that come about? And did, were you immediately what? What, what were you feeling, yeah, Jonathan? It was just. We will get right back to the podcast in just a couple minutes. But first, I want to welcome and thank Andretti Indoor Karting and Games. I love Andretti for so many reasons. It's an amazing, gigantic, fun game center that you can do a couple things. Like I don't know, some of the best go kart racing you'll ever do. They got a massive arcade. They got a ropes course. They got laser tag. They they got racing simulations. They got dark rides. They got delicious food. They got bowling and so much more. If you go on my social media to the top, Carlos, you can see me playing this fun zombie game like pew, 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 pew. Honestly, it's one of the most fun places you will ever go to because there's so much to do for the kids, for the entire family, and uh, you can watch sports there. You can just have a good old time. Go to their website and, and check it out. It's so much fun. It's Andretti Card. 
Look for the Orlando location. I've been there so many times. I'm going to be doing some some promotions there pretty soon. I can't wait. So uh, check out Andretti Indoor Karting and Games. They support us. Go support them and take them to the top. Now let's get back to to the top. I was excited. My team was excited. You know, we've been like joking about doing it for years, yeah. you know, and then when I got signed with the UFC, it's like, oh, it's right there. You know, oh, we're there. Man. So, and especially with how small the division is, I'm definitely one where I'm going straight, you know, to the top. Yeah, you know, man, I want exactly. to go immediately Hell there. Yeah. Why would I want to? Right. You know, and she dropped uh, down. To, she dropped a weight class, right? Uh, okay. No, she's been at 45 oh, okay. uh, for okay. a while. So she's been sticking around. She oh, she used to um, cut an extra five pounds to do catch weight. Okay, that's what it was. For, okay. uh, because she didn't have anyone else in the division. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so we did it at 45. Um, yeah, we were just, you know, we were up for the challenge. Yeah. We, when we we are and we were and we still are confident in my ability to mm-hmm. beat her, you mm-hmm. know, now she's no longer in the UFC. Right, right. She went to Bellator. Which is a whole other thing. Yeah. But um, well, you were her last fight in the UFC, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. that's kind of cool. So it was the last fight on her contract. So. Well, I went back and I watched the fight because I remember watching it when – when, when you actually did it live. But I was like, you know what? Felice is coming in. I want to go back. Yeah. I got my ESPN Plus. I got all yeah. that stuff. Man, what a fight. Thanks. You really <laughs> p- took it to her. And I think it was a lot closer than a lot of people. Maybe if you look at the scorecard. I mean, they, mm-hmm. but how does it feel to go to toe-to-toe with the champ and really hold your own and almost beat her? I mean, <laughs> I mean, the, I mean. She seemed pretty difficult to take down. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't, that's part of the, the the things I look back at and I say, I just kept trying to do the same one that wasn't working. Why didn't I switch it up? You know, like it was just it was just stuck in my head. Why is that? You know? Like in the middle, you you know, us as fans, we look, well, well why didn't you go for a single yeah. leg? Why didn't you go for this? Is it, why is it? Is it because you're in the moment and you're so hyped up and, and you start fighting her fight or you, you know, how does that work? Yeah. Does the game, how is that the, the the mastery of the of the legends is that they're able to stick to a game plan in the midst that, of it being able to stick to a game plan while making adjustments yes is, and, yes you know that was definitely i don't think i was um fully in my mind throughout the fight you know uh-huh. just kind of not like on autopilot but you know once it started to get you know get a little gritty it yeah. was like all right this should work this yeah. should work and it just wasn't and i you know that's the kind of adjustments i needed to be more you know cognizant of what would you have done different looking back um be a little less predictable i was kind of setting things up mm. in the same way kind of over and over and some of it was being you know successful i would get her a couple sure. you know, here you, and there you, you know you cut her early uh, yeah that was you the know? first round you know i thought felt really comfortable with i was happy with um what about when you took her first punch because she's been known to drop people you know right, right. and you took that not only take the first punch and to go back we, we were talking about joe rogan <laughs> a little earlier he knows who you are. He, the entire fight, was like, this Felicia Spencer is the real deal. I'm sure you heard him afterwards yeah, talking I've about it. it after, yeah, yeah, I mean, how did that feel? That's the biggest lights in the world, the biggest yeah. show, and there you are. Yeah, uh, kind of kind of still surreal. Like, it doesn't really, it's just like another, almost like another fight. I felt really comfortable going into it. I wasn't super nervous. No nerves, you huh? Know? I mean, just like the regular, I mean, I felt, you know, I'm going into a fight, but... I think the the time that it really like really came into yeah, me is when we're you? when we're in the cage and then Bruce Buffer sure. he does like the spin and he turns and looks at me and he's like Lisa Spencer and I'm like and then that was like I never look at anything but my opponent when we're about to fight I'm always just like smile you know I might smile yeah, ready yeah. but when he said that I looked at him and he smiled at me and I smiled at him and I was like oh my god this is so crazy um, oh, I'm on a pay per view yes. Bruce Buffer's right there his yes. suit is awesome how many like, times <laughs> did you watch that how many yeah. you know as a fan I, I sit there and I go. I could only imagine because Bruce is one of those guys. He really gets into it. He knows the sport. Yeah. He's a he, he and and he's one of the few guys that will connect with the actual fighter. Yeah, I was insane. You know, yeah. <laughs> and he draws you in, and there you are, the the co-main event. Yeah, I mean that's as big as it gets. Um, and so that's when the nerves kind of go. And I was like, oh my god, and then I was like, refocus, and then I like back to cyborg. <laughs> yeah, and because I mean you're staring was, at a monster, a, a real yeah. life badass yeah. monster. She's gonna go and probably well. I mean, I guess she doesn't have the title over there. The, uh, somebody yeah, else. no, they're fighting for the title. They're fighting yep, for the title. Julia Budd's been the long reigning champion. And she's in she's a beast too. She's a beast too. Yeah, yeah for sure. So now, uh, you know, you've reached 
pretty much almost the top. That's why you're here. You know, I wanted, I love speaking with people who are masters at their craft and, and that's really what you've become to get to the level. And so I applaud you for that. And, um, and, and so now we're, you got a fight coming up. When's your, when's your night? Sometime in February. February 29th. Who are you taking on? Zara uh, Ferrand Dos Santos. Okay. She's, uh, she's from France. She trains out of France. Sacre bleu. Yes. <laughs> yes. I am uh, going to take you on, Felicia. Right. I will be killing and destroying you. Really? Right. So what yeah. is, uh, what's her background? Um, she's predominantly a striker, but okay. she's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, so she knows, she, you know, she has her game on the ground too, but from what I've seen, mostly likes to strike. And you're a jiu-jitsu girl, right? Uh, mainly, mainly, yeah. Mainly, That's yeah. where I've had most of my success. Are you a black, black belt? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, uh, for a couple of years. So Look at you. Most of my... You know, wins are from jokes so, and stuff like that. Is that does that bother you about cyborg? Is it like you're like, oh, if I would have just tried some different things. But yeah. she's yeah. also a master at defense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. and she's also really good at jujitsu too. Right. So I mean, those Brazilians, yeah. they're they know they they started the mess. You know. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's another thing. It's um, if I would have not been trying to like force. Right. The same thing. Like if I would have kind of flowed, and you know, in the gym, you feel so comfortable. Like go one thing, oh, it doesn't work. Go for another thing. Right, right, right. And then in the moment, it's like, no, this has to work. Yes, Let's yes. Make it work, and then I kind of forced it. So but that's all part of the learning. And you know what? So. You learn your. You know, the weird thing about MMA is records are. It's you could lose four. I mean, I don't want you to. You know, I want you to win the next <laughs> yeah. one. But you can lose four or five, six times as long as you get those ones. Look at Jorge Masvidal. Yeah, I mean that or guy, cowboy, or I mean, cowboy, or even Connor. Right, it's, both coming off a loss, headlining a pay per view. Yes. So. Now you know, speaking of those guys, um, and this is, we're recording this before the Connor uh, cowboy right. fight. It's uh, literally the the day before. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts? So, uh, who do you got, Connor or cowboy? I think it's man. It can go either way, of course. But yeah. I mean, I'm always rooting for. I am always a cowboy fan. Yeah. So. Well, he's probably trained with you guys too, right? He probably comes um, around. I know he's. He hasn't trained, but he did come into the gym when he fought in Orlando. Mm -hmm. He came that week to like get a workout in That's separately cool. from not yeah. like in our yeah. class, but yeah. So we got to see him. I have a picture with him. When, when you get to see a guy there. like that train, is it? Do you see, oh, wow, there's just a whole nother level <laughs> up for, like, those guys? I mean, you're it's, in that realm, too, with females. I'm just saying, like, when you see arguably one of the – I mean, he does have yeah. the most knockouts in the UFC, yeah, right? Yeah, he's one of the top – like, he has the most records of everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Different records, random records. Yeah, so. it, do you see him when you're like – Wow. You know, you get to learn a little bit here and there. Do you yeah. talk to him or is it more like, kind of let him train, let him do his thing? Uh, well, he kind of did it privately so no one was really around. He ca we came in while we were here, but then everyone was like, all right, time to go. So he's got his time. But, yeah. you know, I've been around people, high, you know, highest level and, you know, don't see them train, you know, if, as an outsider looking in right. as much. But, you know, it, it's uh, it's nice to see. It's like inspiring to see the intensity that people train with sure. and, you know, just the different, everyone trains in a little bit different totally style. Totally different. That's you know? what I've seen, and, yeah. And part like, of what I love about my gym is, like, we're we're intense when we need to be, but we also have a lot of fun. You got to have the when, fun. So we, we laugh a lot and we're sparring. We do silly stuff sometimes. Well, I know Seth's a funny guy. Yeah, yeah like, we have silly, to throw yeah. it in there to keep it loose. And even right before a fight in the back room, we're joking. We're doing silly well, stuff. Well, that's what I've seen with a lot of fighters, Felicia. That's good. <laughs> because you know what? At that point, once you're at the fight, it's kind of like a play. It's kind of like a st uh, a show. It's mm -hmm. like you've done all the work to get there. You know, you, you it, mm -hmm. nothing's gonna change from this point on. Yeah, being totally focused and intense and not wanting to move is it, not gonna help out. You see Floyd Mayweather how they are behind uh, the scenes. You see Tyson Fury mm -hmm. how he is behind the scenes. These boxers, they're laughing, they're joking. Um, uh, I've been watching Conor McGregor's camp, and it seems like he's having one of the best camps of his life. Relaxed, yeah, more relaxed. More, yeah. you know, he doesn't have that. Oh, I'm gonna get you. So, I'm gonna, you yeah, know. Have you ever exactly. met uh, Conor? Worked with him or no, seen him? No, yeah. not at all. No. Yeah, he's. Uh, it'll be interesting. So, your thoughts, Conor Cowboy? A little, a, a little analysis. Um, you know, I haven't looked looked bad there like past fights to really break it down or anything uh -huh. but i know connor comes out real strong and cowboy typically doesn't mm -hmm. so depending on how the back room goes with the warm-up and everything the first round what do you mean by end. that the background back i mean room the, like getting a warm-up in like some some fighters warm up for 30 minutes 45 minutes some just do one round i mean in in like shows that are local when I'm there, sometimes I see no warm up at all. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How long do you warm up um, for? I usually need a pretty good warm up. I usually do, um, 
about 20 minutes, something yeah. like that. I kind of go starting to hit some mitts, a couple fights before mine, uh-huh. uh, stretch out a lot, and just kind of like loosen up, just flow a little bit. Because you went three rounds. It didn't go five. Have right. you ever fought a five round? Um, I was in a five round, but it ended in the fourth. Oh, you so, ended it? Yeah. I, nice. I, I uh, finished it. It was my Invicta title fight. Oh, so. con- that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so how much, and we'll get back to the Connor thing. You just got me thinking about this, Felicia. So you can train all you want. You can run all you want. When you're in the when you're in the actual fight, do three rounds feel like ten rounds, conditioning wise, or does it feel um, similar? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, the like we're talking about the adrenaline. Yeah. Like you, it definitely is a lot more exhausting to do a three round fight than three round sparring. Yes. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. It's sure. Like, you, you, without even thinking about it, you're you're really everything. You know, that's the part where you, the more experience you have, the easier it becomes uh-huh. because you're not trying to get a knockout with every punch that you throw. True. You know. Yeah. And when you start to do that. You know, um, that's when you get the knockouts. When right, you're not right. trying to knock them out. So just landing on the button. Just not forcing flowing. it. Exactly. Not yeah. flo- forcing it. So that just comes with, you know, being in the cage and having experience. Just like anything. Right. You know? um, so so you, you have your conditioning down. You have your, your technique down. A key element to being a great fighter. And we see this by everybody who's at that top level, or, or should I say gets the most pay-per-view eyes, is the personality, right? <laughs> yeah. Is getting, you have a great personality, Thank you. but how much do you think about, look what, even though I don't like Colby Covington, I, I don't agree with anything <laughs> yeah. he says. Yeah. I, You know what? I still wanted to see him in Usman fight. You know, right. I wanted yeah. to see him get his ass beat, and I'm even that big of an Usman fan, you know? Right. But... He took it to the next level. And look, there he is in the main stage. Right. Obviously, there's the Connors of the world. Then, then you got Jorge Masdevall, who went from being this journeyman kind of quiet guy. Then he's like, yeah. you know what? Screw it. I'm going right. to show my personality. Right. I'm going to be. I'm going to baptize people. <laughs> and now he's selling his own liquor. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, is this something that you think about? Is it something like you know maybe I need to you know play it up a little bit here you know maybe i'll be a trump girl maybe I'll be, you know right, whatever yeah, it may be play, play a role yeah um, play, i mean is this something you think about it you know it is and i i i'm always in the gym like oh i'm gonna turn heel you know and then i'm just like <laughs> pretending to be mean and you just like go on about it and then i never do it in the right, moment i right. have a chance to do it um They're like oh she's a teacher she's sweet <laughs> yeah. she teaches algebra yeah, yeah. you know um my husband is actually always on me like you know, talk that, you know, tweet this or that. And, and then we collaborate and then it's like, all right, kind of in the middle. Oh, <laughs> so, but you know what they Because I'm too nice and he's a little too crazy. So <laughs> he's a fighter too. Middle. Yeah, he's yeah. a fighter. So when, he, when it's his turn, he can just do whatever he wants. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is important, Felicia, and I would love yeah. to see you find, I mean, it's not like I've scoured over all yeah. your posts and everything, but I mean, that is such a huge element of fighting. Yeah. I mean, just like social media is very important for any business, any mm. person these days, for me and my field, it's very important to to keep the publicity up. Right, make those you, it, it, you know, statements. You, I mean, MMA world and basketball are very similar in the sense of the culture is very a uh, big part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you know, a lot of people are always talking online. This person tweet fights get get set up by one tweet, right? By tweet, you know. And yeah. so, you know, maybe next after this fight, you kind of you know yeah. check out your next opponent, yeah, you talk a little couple, shit, yeah, yeah <laughs> like some some funny memes about yeah. them. I'll help you. Just say, yeah, yeah, uh, shoot, I, send them over. I, I'm I always you. open the to getting uh, memes those are the best I like it I like it I'm gonna do that um, sure. so uh, I'm gonna go uh, well if we're gonna go back to the Cowboy Connor fight I, I, I either one of the guys I would like to see win but I kinda wanna see Connor win more cause I yeah. wanna <laughs> see him fight Jorge hey, or, uh, or someone or yeah. and, you know hey, let him fight because it's definitely worse for Connor to lose than for Cowboy to lose I would say so, so I would say so in that way like for the sake of the sport and exciting fights coming yeah I could see that Connor yeah. maybe should win more than I, Cowboy I agree it's kinda like the Lakers like you want those teams to do well you <laughs> yeah. know for whatever reason but if Cowboy loses this could be his last fight. I I, I genuinely see it's yeah. like the dude's taken a lot yeah. of beatings. It's not like he needs the money. He or... doesn't need the money. And that's what I was going to ask with you. So this is a brutal sport. You're getting your head kicked in. Yeah. You know, literally every time you took a you took a hell of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, a lot of shots. Yeah. Again, yeah, against sure. Cyborg. <laughs> I mean, and that was one thing Rogan yeah. uh, and, and the other commentator, I can, uh, Cruz, uh, Dominic Cruz. Dominic yeah. Cruz, yeah. Uh, we said, man, Felicia <laughs> can take a bunch. She's yeah, a like, top chick. Great compliment. Yeah. But <laughs> you were throwing it back. You didn't, but you didn't back down. There's yeah. a lot of times they take the hit and all of a sudden they're not, they're not right. you know, moving forward. Yeah. And you did not stop. Yeah. So it's a credit to you. Thank but you. like, how much do you think about that? The CTE? I, do. How much I do definitely you know? think about it. You know, and luckily for most of my fights, I 
I've been able to, you know, some of my finish in the first round. Mm-hmm. I don't get hit too much. I control it. Was that the um, most hits you think you've taken in a fight? Yeah, for oh, sure. Wow. Yeah, wow. for sure. Um, Pam Sorensen, my title fight in Invicta, was also up there. We had a fourth round that we started. She was really challenging. Wow. And she definitely pushed me a lot, too. Okay. Um, and, you know, I've had a lot of tough fights with people that don't have big names, you know. Sure. But, um, but that was definitely, you know, the toughest that I've had so far. Um, you know, the margin isn't as big as people think, though, mm-hmm. you know, from – the, the badass that's training in their gym as an amateur, you know, compared to a, uh, you know, a pro fighter in the UFC, Evicta, like the margin is there, but it's not as big as you think. Mm. Like the gap that to get to where they are, it's not as big. There's a lot of talent everywhere, there is, you know, yeah. and everyone's got their, I think in amateurs, usually people have like a, one thing that they're way better at right. and then as pros, they're more well-rounded. You got to be well-rounded. So yeah. that's probably where the difference is mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't, Oh, yeah. We're talking about taking punishment yeah. and all that. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. What were, yeah. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, do you say, do you, are you giving yourself a yeah. time? Is it like, you know what? I'm going to do five more years. I'm going to do four more years. Yeah, or? pretty much. I mean, I'm 29. I'm just turned 29. Okay. Um, I wanted, I told the matchmakers, hey, I, I took two fights in a row when I first started, you know, Megan Anderson in May. I took fought Cyborg in July. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to and take a little break. Those are two tough co- you know. competitors right yeah. there. I and mean, I, back to back, you know, fight camps, we call them. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to need a little a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to be smart about it. I'm not going to go right back into training. How much weight do you have to cut in order to get, like, how long are your fight camps? I know some, you hear these brutal numbers <laughs> for the guys that they're cutting 15 and 20 pounds. Oh, yeah. Stan- and standard, yeah. That's, that's what I cut. Um, I mean, throughout the camp, usually I'll diet down, like, 5, 10 pounds and then cut about 10 pounds of okay, water. Okay, Felicia, so. help me out here. I'm okay at working out. I work out. I'm not doing <laughs> what you're doing. I don't mind working out, and I can get on a pretty good floor. But food. That's the thing <laughs> that gets me, and I yeah. and I buckle. What do you do when you have to cut the weight, and you're not, you know, you're married, and you go yeah. out to dinner, and you want what do you what is in the back of your mind? Now you have a great incentive; it's literally your livelihood and right. and and your overall conditioning. But what do you what do you do? And for anybody listening out there or watching. They're trying to lose right. weight. They're trying to get and better. And they don't have to step on a scale yes. in front of the whole world. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. That's an incentive. That's true. That's <laughs> Make people watch you step on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you know, just finding, you know, finding what works for you. It's not going to be the same for everybody. Um, do you tell yourself anything when, right, if you're going to have that slice of pizza, if you're going to do that, <laughs> you're going to go like, no, Felicia, bad Felicia. No. Uh, well, I just try to replace it with something else. Okay. You know, like find something that's like. Maybe in the beginning, just a little bit healthier, and then eventually you'll be, you know, down to the carrot sticks or yes, something. Yes, you know? and, yeah, yeah. Uh, my my husband's always like, carrot sticks have too much sugar. I'm oh, like, come man, on, he's leave hardcore. me. Come on. Well, I guess but it then, helps. But then when he's cheats, it's jelly beans. So oh. you know. <laughs> How long have you been married for? Um, about a month. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. We've been engaged for three and a half years you know together, what? five that's, and a half years. That's you know, perfect. That's a good was, amount of time. Um, it was you a got... quick, very small wedding. Did you meet in the gym? Oh, that's yeah, so, so great. And the, the nice thing is he is also fighting in February. So oh, right now we're you're both, both fighting her. together. So there is not much going out to eat, no pizza in the house. Damn. So, so let me ask you this. I mean, obviously, when you have a kid, my wife's pregnant right now, yeah. uh, you ain't fighting. <laughs> you <laughs> you're know? Right, yeah. And even almost before, uh, mm. the you know, you want, you're planning on it. Is that something right. you're thinking about in the future? We're down the road. You know, yeah. I, I definitely want to, you know, be able to be done fighting Within, like you said, about four years, maybe, yeah. depending on where the career goes, you know, mm-hmm. like if it's starting to take a downturn, then I'll just stop, you <laughs> right, know, I'm going right. to be smart Don't. about it. If I'm not going to be at the top, then I, then yeah. there's no point in doing it for me. me. Um, and like, like I said, since I started fighting, it's like, if I didn't really believe I could be champion, I wouldn't go through the, the process of, mm-hmm. of fighting. I would just continue training right. because I love training. Right. But it's not worth the damage to your body, your brain. It really isn't. You know, you wake up every day in fight camp just like falling apart. Oh, you know? I can like, why? imagine. Yeah. You know, why would I do that to myself unless I really, really thought that I could make it? Well, so. you, it seems like you got a good plan. Now, yeah. as far as uh, the champ champ of all right now is Amanda Nunes, literally. Right. right? Doesn't she have the belt in two divisions? Right. My oh. division in 135. Okay. Amanda Nunes. Can you beat Amanda Nunes? Everybody's beatable. And Everybody's beatable. Yes. Absolutely. Everybody's beatable. I love that answer. You know, I mean, I know I'm beatable. Yes. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cyborg knows. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Cyborg's beatable. Amanda's beatable. But She's you, only just, you know, she had an up and down career she sure for did. most of her career. She sure did. And then it, um, it seems to click for some fighters like Jorge. Right. Like, uh, like Amanda, um, uh, Tony Ferguson. These guys have had a pretty good career. Uh, yeah. yeah. But so like, but rarely does anybody in their field like, I'm an actor, so sure, I watch actors, and I'll see them, and I'll be like, 
Yeah, wow, well, I appreciate it. But I'm like, oh, I, I could have played that. You know? Yeah, yeah, I could have you know. Better, yeah. But do you see, do, when you watch her fight, are you like, yeah. oh, oh she, drops her, she drops her left hand or she does this. Seeing patterns, stuff yes. like that. Yes. Seeing what could have gone differently in her last fight. Right. Where she could have finished it. Because, and, I mean, yeah. it's UFC especially, you, you fight an Amanda Nunes and you're two fights away from it, essentially. I mean, you're yeah. basically there, if not one fight. I yeah, mean, it's up yeah, to her, really. This one, I mean, um, my whole division pretty much is fighting on this card. Yeah. There's two uh, featherweight fights on the same card. Oh, wow. Uh, Megan Anderson's fighting Norma Dumont. Oh, okay. And I'm fighting Zara. And that's almost the whole division. So I'm kind of thinking they want to use that as like a who looks the best. To, to go against Amanda. Then it's going to go to Amanda. So, um, so there's, there's a possibility that it could be the next one. Because, so. I mean, you fight Amanda, you beat Amanda. Bye bye virtual school. Bye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. that's that's the that's the deal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, I love I love you kids. Yeah. I know y'all learned this algebra, but I'm about to go be yeah. a superstar. Yeah. I am so excited to see you get to that level. Um, I, I think you have everything it takes. I mean, Thank I'm you. not a, I'm not an <laughs> MMA analyst, right. but I sure as hell watch almost every single fight. Right. And I think you got a great plan. You got a great road ahead. Um, and uh, I really want you to do well. And I want you to come back and come on the monsters. And, and I appreciate you listening to the show as well yeah. and um, and I just wish you the best Felicia well thank and, you so uh, much for having me it absolutely awesome. and uh, you talk with someone that kind of knows the game all right you know? <laughs> you know, I appreciate you saying that and yeah. uh, and I will be watching your fight and, uh, and you're gonna win and uh, I'll tell you this today will be a great day to the top never stop <laughs>